Walking Away by Cecil Day-Lewis was written in 1956, although it was not published until 1962 in the collection The Gate. It is dedicated to his eldest son, Sean, who was born in 1931 and would have been about seven years old in the episode that the poet is describing, and about 25 years old at the time the poem was written. The poet has gone to watch his son's first game of football at his new boarding school, but then has to leave him there when the match is finished. The poem is made all the more poignant then, as we realise the nature of the separation and what the walking away in the title actually signifies for the poet. The poem is about a rite of passage, leaving home, but in this case the child has not yet reached maturity. He isn't just walking off the football pitch, he is leaving the family home at the age of seven years old, never to live there permanently again. The feelings involved in the growing independence of the child are told from the perspective of the father, rather than the child himself. The poem has four stanzas of five lines each and an ABACA -A -A rhyme scheme. The language in the poem is simple and the rhymes are monosyllabic, perhaps indicating the simplicity and rawness of his feelings. A number of words form a semantic field of separation, such as wrenched from its orbit, drifting away, eddying away, letting go, and the repeated walking away. There is no formal bass meter. The rhythm is largely iambic, didum, and anapistic, didum, where either one or two unstressed syllables are followed by a stressed syllable, which gives it a measured pace. Line lengths are reasonably regular, but the poet employs enjambment and caesura to give the poem its rhythmical quality. There are long sentences containing multiple clauses and phrases, which often flow across line breaks and, in the first stanza, across the stanza break itself. The way in which this allows the poem to ebb and flow creates a sense of the poet being moved along by his train of thought, although he is not caught up in a whirlpool of emotions. The separation has happened gradually, and he has had 18 years to reflect upon it. The poem is written in the first person, and the speaker refers to his son using the second person you, which makes it feel much more personal and intimate. The word away is repeated five times, once in the title and once in each stanza, which emphasises his concern for the physical and emotional distance between them. Imagery throughout the poem is taken from nature to highlight that even though this is painful for the speaker, it is still natural and therefore the right thing to happen. There is growth and change all around us, and in other species the child separates from its parent as a matter of course. The title, Walking Away, is both literal and metaphorical, and is repeated throughout the poem. The first time it is used, it describes how the son walks away from his father at the end of a football match, but as the poem progresses, it also alludes to the emotional distancing of a child from their parent, which is a natural, albeit painful for the parent, part of growing up. A sunny day, on the cusp between summer and autumn, with leaves just turning, reminds the poet about a momentous event, 18 years ago almost to the day. Symbolically, the leaves which are turning from green to yellow are just about to fall from the tree. The colour of the leaves and the fact that the touch lines are new ruled are clues that it is the start of the autumn term back at school. Literally, the lines have been freshly painted onto the pitch for the start of the new term and football season, but metaphorically, Lines have also been drawn that mark out new boundaries in the child-parent relationship. The speaker has gone to watch his son's first game of football. As a father, he has turned into a passive observer on the sidelines, and at the end of the game his son leaves the field with the other boys. 
The poem was written a year before the first artificial satellite was launched, so the simile, like a satellite wrenched from its orbit, refers to a natural satellite, like a moon, which is a small body that orbits a larger one due to an immense gravitational pull. As a parent, he has, up to this point, been at the centre of the boy's universe, controlling and guiding him. The verb wrenched has connotations of violence and power, suggesting pain as the separation is forced upon them both. The poet watches him drifting away, a verb suggesting a lack of direction and purpose. The enjambment at the end of this stanza, carrying the meaning over into the beginning of the next, enhances the sense of movement and the lack of control that the father now feels he has. At the end of the game, instead of going home with his father, the boy walks in the other direction, behind a scatter of boys back into school. The use of the word scatter to create a collective noun for the group of boys conveys how he perceives their sense of disorganisation and lack of cohesion at this early point in their school careers. The memory is obviously a vivid one, which the poet is reliving as he writes, in the present tense, that he can see his son walking away from him towards the school. We can sense that he feels his son is not ready yet. He alludes to the pathos of a half-fledged thing. The pity or sadness that is evoked by a baby bird leaving the nest before it is fully fledged, i.e. having all its feathers so that it is able to fly. He feels that his son is leaving home before he is fully mature and able to fly properly, and he evokes his son's vulnerability as he is metaphorically set free into a wilderness, where it is implied that paths are difficult to find and predators may be lurking. The way in which he describes his son's gait of one who finds no path where the path should be suggests he perceives in his movements his uncertainty and lack of confidence as he is striking out into unmapped territory with no one to guide him. The third stanza continues to focus on the sight of his son, a hesitant figure, unsure of what to do without the guidance of his parent, who is eddying away like a winged seed loosened from its parent's stem. Once more, the poet employs natural imagery to evoke the breaking of the close relationship between the father and son, to imply that, painful as it is, it is part of a natural process. A seed cannot continue to grow if it does not break free. The verb eddying away evokes the circular movements of something that is powerlessly carried by currents of air, suggesting the lack of control that he perceives his son to have as though carried on the wind like a winged seed. The sight of his son embodies something I never quite grasp to convey about nature's give and take. He feels that the image speaks for itself as he himself struggles to grasp or understand it. The personification employed in nature's give and take suggests that nature provides you with a child then takes it away as it grows up. The metaphorical image, the small, the scorching ordeals which fire one's irresolute clay, alludes to the idea that a piece of raw clay is fired to give its irresolute, i.e. malleable, changeable state, a permanent structure and form. Day-Lewis is suggesting that these small, yet scorching ordeals, that mark transitions between one life stage and another, are significant and painful at the time, communicated in the adjective scorching, and yet are small progressive steps which are necessary to develop maturity and to form the adult self and identity. The fourth stanza begins, I have had worse partings. Indeed, the separation itself is actually quite understated. There are no words of farewell and no tearful embraces. The speaker could also perhaps be alluding to permanent separations and or deaths of loved ones, but there is still something that sets this one apart, in that it gnaws at my mind still. Even after 18 years, 
the memory of it causes him distress and anxiety. The use of personification in the verb gnaws is an indication that the memory seems to have a life of its own, the persistence of which bothers him and causes him pain. Does he wonder if he did the right thing by sending his son away at seven years old for boarding school? Could there be tension between what his head and heart are telling him was the right thing to do? The fact that the poem is dedicated to his son Sean and that he refers to him in the second person could be a hint that he feels guilt and that he wants his son to know that sending him away was hard for him too, but that he did it because he believed it to be in his son's best interests. The allusion to God at the end of the final stanza is ambiguous. Perhaps it is roughly saying what God alone could perfectly show, how selfhood begins with a walking away and love is proved in the letting go. This is perhaps a reference to the Gospel of St John, chapter 3, verse 16, where it is written that God proved his love for the world by giving his only Son. There is a suggestion that when you let go of your child, this can only ever be an imperfect or rough imitation of God's perfect act to which we should aspire. Whatever the allusion to God means, it is clear that the poet believes that the journey to independence or selfhood has to start with a walking away, and that if a parent truly loves their child, this will be proved in the letting go. Not only can the verb proved here be taken to mean to show evidence of, but also to mean to test, as evidenced by the mental anguish that he has suffered over nearly two decades. Thanks for watching. I'd really appreciate any questions or comments below. I look forward to hearing from you.